time in history, all four belts in the cruiserweight division will belong proudly around the waist of one man. Wingy Boxing, IFL TV, MTK Global. I'm here with the main man. What's going on? Cal you fire. Cal you fire? What's going on, brother? I was going to say to you, you've got to say my name properly. You've got to do it how you do it. <laughs> how are you feeling, man? WBA Super Flyweight Champion. How are you feeling, brother? I'm a bit tired. I'm a bit tired. A bit tired, yeah. But, first one back, because it's the first one back, in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, back, back in camp and uh, sort of like shaking off, the, shaking off the rust, so to speak, or? Yeah, yeah. Um, you got to see firsthand. Yeah. A bit of sparring, you know. Bit of pad work, bag work, everything really. That's it. Big kid, you sparring with as well. Big, uh, strong kid, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me, right? What, what's what's the typical cow you fight day then? Because this is almost like it's almost been like reality TV for me today. I'm, I'm at the train station. I get picked up in a lovely whip, and then <laughs> taken to the you know taken to watch you um, do your stuff. What was the typical cow day like? So what what would what, you do, like chill out when when you're in your home? I just want to sort sort of get into the zone. Yeah, so like. I'll get up. Normally, it depends on time I'm training, really. Yeah. Like, lucky enough, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty lucky that I can train really whenever I want. And, you know, I've got a great trainer, Max McCracken, who, who, can, tra who can also train me whenever suits me. Of course, yeah. So, um, but normally, about 11 o'clock, I'm in the gym. Um, and then we go through the paces like you've seen today. And how do, how do you like turn off, like switch off, like so when you go home now, what, what do you do in your game? Just chill. Chill out, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Eat, relax, put my feet up, watch a bit of TV. Um, if I haven't got nothing to do, you know, go for my emails, things like that. So you're, you're in camp now, have you got an um, actual fight announced, a fight, fighter and a date announced or are we just... Well, I know I've got like a date that I'm fine but I'm just waiting for that to be announced. Wait, wait, waiting for that to be announced, yeah. yeah. But um, overall, feeling good, getting back into the routine of things and sort of get going. Uh, yeah, get yeah, going. yeah, yeah, just, just back in now, I've got something to work towards. So, so alright, sorry, carry on. sweating like... <laughs> no, 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 you go, you go, man, just been working out. So since the, uh, since the conception win then, that yeah. title, lifting that title, how has things changed for, for Cali Fire, man? Tell, tell me, tell well, me what, what's life been like yeah. since then. I think things have changed, you know, quite a bit for me. Um, obviously, you're more... Well known, you get noticed a lot more. Um, you're more respected, obviously. You know, you're world champion. Um, you're better off, you know, financially, which has always been one of one of my goals. But mainly to be world champion. It's it. When you're training from nine years old and you always want to be world champ, when you do it, you're there. Yeah, you're there. But at the same time, it's like, okay, I've done it now. So <laughs> it ain't like what I thought it would be like. How do you mean? Explain that. That, that, that. That's what I want to get. That's what I want to try and get to. When you say it's not quite what you think it would be, like you just... think like that's it then. You world champ and now what? <laughs> what's next? So it's not. It's nice. Don't get me wrong. Of course, yeah. But now there's there's more. It's like I thought like you become world champ and you kind of like kind of desire kind of goes a bit, but it doesn't. As, it, as weird as it sounds, you train harder. You're more professional in what you do. Right, I got you. Um, so if, if, if I can. If, if there's a piece of equipment that I could buy to to help me improve half a percent, I'll buy it. Yeah. And if I don't like it, I probably don't use it again. But just to say that I've, 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 I've got bought it, it and I've tried got, it. You've done it, yeah. Or if there's supplements, you know, things like that. Um, yeah. It's just it's just be it's, it's, like, it's better now because I can afford to do things. Right, yeah. Not saying that I wasn't able to afford to do things before. But you just got that, yeah, that extra. But because you fought, you know, you were, you were a champion, you, you fight for more money. Um, and respect to you know my promoter um, Eddie and all that match room, who because um, I'm pretty lucky really. I'm one of the super, I think I'm one of the few super flies in world boxing. I'm probably probably one of the highest paid as well. Yeah. Um, so you know, big respect to to my promoter and the, and the whole team who get me them not them nice purses as well. And let, tell me if I got this wrong. I might have this wrong. Birmingham's first world champion, yeah. 100 years, is that right? Yeah. How does that feel, man? Look at you sitting there chilling. That's a massive thing, man. Yeah, it's, you, you know what it is? I don't, I don't normally, I don't take nothing from it. That's the, you, see, you stay grounded, don't you? That's yeah, what I noticed yeah, about yeah, yeah. speaking to you today. You're grounded in that, like yeah, you said. Yeah, it's just like, what, what, 
someone wanted tips with boxing and you'll, you'll pop round and help them out sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything like, if somebody wants to chat with me, I'll have a chat with him. It's, it's nothing, it's minor to me. Um, I've had, a, you know, I've had one of them upbringings where, like a lot of people do in boxing. You come from, I come from, bloody hell, I grew up in Borsalief in, in Birmingham. It's like, not the most glamorous area. Well, as he said to me, hashtag start from the bottom, innit? Yeah, that's, that's it. That's it, yeah. I'm a little, I'm a little Arab from Birmingham. Yeah. <laughs> cool, <laughs> it's cool. Like, I'm no one special. But uh, you, you haven't let it go to your head and sort of stayed on a, st- stayed on a good level. Speaking of it, t- growing up in Birmingham, tell me, tell me what, what, what that was like for a, a young Cal Yafai. I, I, I had one of the normal upbringings like most, most kids um, from the area. Um, moved around quite a bit, different areas. Um, my mum brought us up as a single parent for most of, most of our childhood. Right, okay. Um, and there was quite a few of us. So obviously props, props to my mum there for keeping us on the on the straight path because things could have gone tits up you know what I mean that's good yeah she kept um, you focused and yeah yeah got us into boxing um, oh did she do encourage that yeah yeah it's like it was Gamal that started boxing first oh really so we used to always watch uh, the Naz fights and and pay to watch them on Sky Box Office um, and Gamal was like the, the mad kid who was very hyper always getting into trouble and he he went to go to the boxing club first. Mum took him down, and then about four weeks later, I had to go. I had no intention of boxing. Really. And now look, and that's it. Well, when you say Gamal was high park, because I've only seen, I haven't actually spoke to, him, but in interviews, he seems quite chilled out. Is yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he yeah. high? Is he is he still got that sort of hyper attitude now? Or is he a lot more? No, chill no, now? no. He's um, he's he's very he's very chill. But he's one of them. He's one of them guys. He's like he's. he's if you meet him now, he's quiet. But once you get to know him, opens up. Yeah, he opens up a bit. But um, he's just he's, he's a quiet, hot-headed kind of guy. Okay, can Not... lose his rag very easily. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> you did a big smile on your face. You you you've remembered experiences where that's happened. I can tell by yeah, the look yeah, on your yeah, face. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, I mean, speaking of obviously your brother, the the loss. Uh, what, what what did you think of the fight overall against uh, Gavin McDonald? What what did you feel? Um, was was it tactics to come out? Because Gavin yeah, was yeah. on it tactic wise, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, fair play to Gavin, the full team. He he come out and box a brilliant fight. Um, can I just got the tactics all wrong really? But it was it was um, it was a bit surprising. Was he looking for the knockout a little bit too much? Was he going a bit too forward, Gavin? Or uh, sorry, uh, uh, nah, you know. I don't think it was that. It was like. I don't know, we've, we've spoke about it and things like that and it's like Gamal's just trying to box a bit too much. Right, okay, fair enough. You know what I mean? Like, he's an aggressive fighter. Yeah, and he puts his punches together well. He's got a good right hand. Um, but it's just, and all of a sudden on fight night, he's trying to box for 12 rounds and you can't do that if you're not used to it. And I've, you know, right, I understand, that yeah. Did he tire? Um, did you say he tired a little bit towards yeah, the end? Yeah, you yeah. Um, yeah you know, his condition and everything was per- went perfectly, and he normally it's not normally an issue for him. But I think he, he was he was moving a lot, a uh, lot of movement early in the fight. And was it the occasion, or was he right with? I, I, possibly. Yeah. Possibly. Um, but there's a lot of movement in the fight. Um, a bit wild, left hooks. Okay, let's take you back. Seventh of July, two thousand twelve. Your professional debut. Which I've got these details right uh, on the Kelbrook Carson Jones. Yeah. Um, Delroy Spencer. Do you yeah. remember that? Yeah. Tell me where your mind was at before in a dressing room, your first professional fight. What was you thinking? Well, I was, I was thinking this is taking the piss <laughs> <laughs> because I was there from like what? I, wait, I think I remember. I remember getting there about four o'clock, and then I had to weigh in again on the day. So I weighed in at the arena at about half four, went to Nando's across the road, had a meal, and I come back and it was, you know when you're afloat? Yeah. I never knew what afloat was. Right, I got you, so you, was, you didn't know what was going so on. So I didn't know what was going on, I was just thinking like, oh, I'm going to yeah, yeah. go at any time. Yeah. And I was sitting there, I was warming up for about two hours, and then next thing my hands were getting a bit, you know when you're going a bit numb, you've had your bandages on right. too long. Gloves on, my gloves are soaked inside because I was sweating from warming up, sitting down, warming up. Next thing you know, like, I'm on at nearly 11 o'clock. And did you, uh, how, how did that feel going from that transition from the amateurs to the pros? How, how did that feel in the ring when, you, when you're sort of physically in there or did you just not? I loved it. You loved I was it. like, 
I felt naked. Oh, I got, yeah, of course you would do. Like no head guard, no top on, little gloves. Um, I felt like it was a, like a street fight. Yeah. Under the lights, it was hot, it was really hot under the lights. And I thought, shit, I've never experienced this before. But I loved it once I started, once I started landing leather and seeing he was eating them and I thought, yeah, this is a shit. Nice. Okay, the conception fight where you got your title. Um, talk, talk me through that fight because from round one you was going for it, not 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 recklessly, but there was you know body shots. There was a lot of variation uh, early on. Well, what what was the plan when when you going up against Conception? Oh, the plan was to basically box the shit out of him, <laughs> as I was told. <laughs> box the shit out of him, keep it long. Once you get in close, you do your work and you nullify him. You tie him up. You frustrate him. And then, whatever I can take on the inside, I'll take it and then get back from the boxing, keeping it long. And that's what I did, and I frustrated him very, very, very much. Um, it was a bit of a mad, mad weekend, really, because it was like, from the weighing, he, he, I can't remember how much he was over. He was like, like nearly three pounds. Yeah, it was, a bit, it was a bit over on the yeah. So, it was like, I had to talk with, with my team afterwards, after the weighing. I just went. I just after after I went in. I just done what I normally do. I thought I'm just going to concentrate on me, do what I do, forget everything else. Um, and it, I went back to the hotel after I'd, after I ate and recovered a bit and things like that. And it was I was given the option basically. You don't have to fight this guy. He's coming well overweight. You can not fight at all, and you can just you can fight the next next challenger in line in Birmingham in like April time. I was thinking, fucking hell. Like, I trained my bollocks off for this time, all that time, to be this moment. To be thrown away, yeah. And to just have to like sit over Christmas, stay in shape a bit and then get back on it in the new year to fight for a vacant title, I was thinking, nah. And then, for what it's worth, I think you made the right choice, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, just, I, just, <laughs> I just thought, yeah, got a few extra quid in the bank from failing weight, and I thought, yeah, just get on with it, man. It's only a couple of pounds. I ain't trained all, all this time and put so much into it over a couple of pounds. When that announcement was made, world champion, what was your thoughts, immediate thoughts? Can you remember? It was very emotional for me. Because um, you're, hu you're hugging your mum and that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it was like, do you know when it's a bit emotional? I don't know, it was weird. It was like, because obviously, obviously I, I cried a bit because it took a long, it, like, it was a long road from when you first start boxing. Yeah, that's what, that's what I wanted to capture. So you know, I've been through a lot, a lot of shit. So like, I started boxing, I was, I was shit. I was terrible. You know, I went through a stage in my first, what, I was like, won my first amateur fight, lost my second, won my third, and I lost about seven in a row. And it was at the point where it was like, people were saying to me like, you know, maybe they sent for you boxing. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, I don't think I'm very good at it. And I moved club. I went and seen Franco Sullivan, who's, who, who trained, he's trained loads of fighters and trained like Robin McCracken, Max McCracken, spent all the McCrackens and loads of other fighters. Costas Petru, if you remember him, who was British champion. Um, and he just like changed me. And then I had loads of fights. Won, won about 17 on the trot. Then I lost one. Then I won another 20 odd. Then I obviously boxed for England and GB. And, and you know, go, it's, a, it's a long career, really. Um, when you're on the when you're on boxing for Great Britain from like 2005 to 2012, seven years. You know. Traveling all over the world, fighting all these world-class fighters, it it, um, it takes its toll. But when I turned pro, it was like I was refreshed. And then I went through all that, and then I, I went through tearing my bicep in like my seventh fight, I think it was seventh or eighth fight. And then I was out for seven, eight months, and that opened my eyes a bit as well. Because um, before that, I was blowing everyone away and yeah. took um, took money for granted. I took everything for granted, really, and then that opened my eyes, and then that's it. And you know, the rest is history. I want to become world champion, and all the flashback of everything I've done, 
even when I was a kid going to the gym. Long getting, road, didn't it? When you yeah. say it like that, it's a long road. Getting long. And get, you know, when you get in, when you don't have a choice, and your mum can't afford to pay for you, take you to the gym because you ain't got enough money to put petrol in the car. That's it. And she's busy looking after loads of kids, having to finish from work. It's like either walk to the gym or get the bus. And sometimes, you know, when you do, when you make them fake bus passes and fake super glue the dates on it and everything, <laughs> or a day saving from three days ago, yeah. and you've got to hold it and to pray to God that the bus driver don't pull you back. And now, and now it's different. That's that's good. That's good. Um, your um, so your your show is Sheeda fight, WB, uh, WBA number one ranked show Sheeda. Tall, awkward, sort of guy. How do you plan for a guy like that? Because when 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 I was watching you fight him, it's like. You went in to engage at spots, but then you, you sort of kept on the outside. Was you just trying to see what he was giving you as opposed to pushing the fight? Yeah, it was, it was a weird fight because everyone's taller than me, it's not hard. Yeah. Not, you know, five foot four, so not very, very hard to be taller, but he was like a bit of a freak. Um, I, did it. I had to be careful because you're 23 now, like he's 20, he was 23 now, or whatever, 24 now, whatever he was, and He's not boxed anybody of no, but he's just done what he's had to do. So you don't know how good someone is. Yeah, when that's what I was thinking. Yeah, when when um, when the fight was announced. So I just I wanted to have a look at him. He's very confident, um, but so was I. So it was it was a it was a weird weekend because it was another weird one because I felt like I have to win this fight because there's so much at stake. Like. I know that once I win this, I can be in some big fights, and you know that's where I want to be. And, and so I put a bit of pressure on myself, and I feel like I underperformed a bit. Um, Why do you feel that? Because I think you, because he was a long, tricky guy, and it was almost an unknown quantity. Sometimes you can't go in there and just try and yeah, impress yeah, the but, fans, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. But when I look when I look back at it properly, I think to myself, you know what? I've done what I had to do. I grinded out the win. I won comfortably against a guy that was undefeated. Um, I, you, you don't know if a guy is not never lost. You don't know how good he really is. Right, so that's it. Yeah. I just don't want to do, and I showed that I can outbox a yeah. very tall guy. And like in rounds like the fifth round, you're using a lot of evasion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you're sort of mixing up those evasion. He's working on the inside. Does some little nice Pernell Whitick little moments. Which people don't notice, but I know it's little bits like that. The little, you know, when 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 the hands were down and that, and it's it was just a. a I kind of respect that win because he was unknown and awkward and you grinded it out, got the win, but as you say then, it's sort of almost sad to hear you say, oh, you, you know, he wasn't really that happy with the fight. Yeah, yeah, but I, I, I kind of have uh, bigger expectations. Right, I've got you to say, you, you uh, sort of expect better for, uh, for, for yourself, sort of. Yeah. Um, okay. You, you are the son of Yemeni parents, is that correct? Yeah. So, my favourite uh, British fight growing up, you know what I'm going to say, <laughs> Prince Nas. <laughs> Did you see his legendary Chris Eubank run? You must have seen it. Yeah, that was... <laughs> give, me your, that was give me your take on that, look at you smiling. I had, I had a stitch, man. It was like I was in tears. <laughs> I was sitting down, I was in tears. I just thought, this geezer is You think he was too... First of all, did you see the fight there? Yeah, 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 yeah. What, what did you think of the, the, the uh, Eubank? It's a good fight. Brilliant fight. Um, I just think that, you know, I'd, I'd picked Groves all along because I thought, he ain't boxed anybody at that level. Uh, Groves is a very very underrated fighter um, he's come through a lot you know to to get knocked out by Frotch tw twice but well, he got stopped the first time yeah um, then got badly knocked out and then he went over to Vegas and boxed Badu Jack and you know lost a close fight with him and then he, he went through God knows what um, he had a tough fight with that Rebrass I remember boxing his undercard that was a tough one wasn't it yeah it was a tough fight um, what else did he box now Chud and Nobby had a broken jaw. It's like... And then Murray, that, that was a... And then Murray was a tough fight as well. To come through all that, fair play to him, you know, good fight, very, very good fight, very underrated fight. Um, and he kind of beat Eubank pretty comfortably, I thought. Then popped his shoulder in, in the last round. What did you think of Eubanks, the, the, the way he was fighting? Do you think uh, people were quite harsh saying, OK, there's no tactics there, or do you think it's just his natural... I mean, he, he's obviously a, a fighter as opposed to a, a sort of tactician. Would you say it's just how he fights, or can, can yeah. he change that? So? I don't know. It's just like, I, think he's, I think that's just him. Um, and to try and box with Groves is very hard, especially when you haven't boxed someone at that level before. And it's just, I think he's just 
it's just a hard fight to try and how box grows. With that, he's got a horrible jab. I think someone who's got a good boxing brain, someone like Callum Smith, and I think that's why it's so intriguing. That what do you think of that one? That's a good one, isn't it? It's a good, good fight. Very can, good. Fight. Can you can you pick, or do you think that's a close one? Um, it depends. I think Callum could win the fight, and I think he will win the fight, but he has to be. On, on switched on and on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I still think there's some, there's, there's other gears to Callum. So I think, I think you'll see. I think so. Yeah. A lot of people may have seen that last fight and think, oh, who's that? Oh, you know, he's not that. But he, he's he done had, what he needed to do. Right. Exactly. That had to get through the fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Done, done what he needed to do. Had, had to get through the fight. Um, all right. Well, you know that I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to say it. You know, I'm going to have to say it. What went through your mind when you heard of your best mate, Charlie Edwards? calling you out what's the first thing that went through your mind when he started all of this calling you out it's like do you blame him in a way I just thought like I don't know I was just like he's hustling isn't he yeah he's yeah yeah that's it that's why you can't really blame him but like I said I said to Coogan before everything I said in that interview is what I have to say about it um I kind of like, I kind of regret the the thing that went on. But you know, the, 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 the telling him about the cost of your whip, sir. Yeah, that's cringe as fuck. <laughs> that <cringes> it was <laughs> great to watch. It's entertaining. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's entertaining for the casuals. <laughs> but <laughs> so, when you speak to big fat casuals, when you speak to the people that know boxing, they know that it's just a fight. Like that. Well, that's what we were talking about off camera. It's like it's fun for people like that, but we know. Realistically, at this stage, it's good to see you go onto the world stage and see what you can get from there as yeah, opposed course. to the... Like I said, like... But if it makes money, is it something you consider if it makes good, good, good money or...? You'd have to make... Like, Silly money. Yeah. Yeah. But... Because you've got, you've got, you've got a... You've worked to this point and you, you've got these American fights that are in a distance yeah. and you want... That's where you want to go first. Not necessarily an insult to Charlie Edwards, but you want to get to a certain... You know, achieve even more and then get, get, get into I think the work thing is as well it's like you can't you, I, you can't go boxing these kind of kind of guys who are like three and one and then the, the other journeyman before that and then you, you, you start shouting your mouth off like you deserve a fight for a world title against an undefeated world champion I just, I just don't see where that where, where that confidence comes from but I, I, on another point I just, I just think that he hasn't got anywhere else to go it's just like where, do you, where does he go? Like if I was, like when I think of it, like now I just think, what does he do next? To fight another journeyman? Mm, not really. Fight for a British title? He's already done that, vacated for whatever reason. I don't know. Um, the only re the only thing is, but get him a world title shot with any of the other champions, they wouldn't want to know. Like who is he? He's not a name. He's, he's achieved nothing. So. Why should I fight? On a scale of one to ten, where tens, I've effing had enough of this. How annoying is it when you hear his name mentioned every time you get a camera shoved in your face, or do you just brush it off? Because I did see it quite on one interview where he said, "I don't want anyone to talk to me about it again." But because we were, yeah, at the at the time, because it was all like everyone's people just asking about it. It was like annoying. Yeah. But now it's just like, listen, this fight is not happening. So. It's irrelevant. I don't mind talking about it because it's just not happening. Do you think, um, as I said though, if the interest was big enough, kind of like, um, I can't think of an example off the top of my head, but there's been fights in the past where one guy people have as the favourite, but because the other guy sort of mouthed it off a little bit, spoken a lot about it, it's um, generated interest and the fight's happened almost like a money fight. But is the money your goal at the moment or is it getting to those big American fights? Is that what, what's more important to you? It's just getting the big fights. The really. big fights, yeah. Because I know the money's there either way. Either way, yeah. Like whatever, sure. whatever, level, whatever money I get to fight him, yeah, I'll get fight. I'll get that money fight. Yeah, him. because but you won't take it unless it's obviously it's at a yeah, certain yeah, yeah. level, yeah. But like, it's just, uh, it's just like somebody said to me the other day. It's like you're not, you're not going to benefit anything from it. If I go in there and I spark him out in two rounds, people are like, yeah, so what? It's meant to do that. Fucking out. If you don't do that, you shit. <laughs> but that's... if I, if I knocked him out in ten rounds. Or if I beat him on points, I'll go, you see that cow your father the other day, he was shit, he was. He couldn't beat that skinny little kid. That, 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 that's the thing that like, we were chatting about off camera. It's like, I sort of think to myself, okay, even you know, people who are Charlie Edwards supporters and fans will say, okay, 
Cal Your Fire's the favourite. But sometimes if uh, you're not, um, I don't want to say underestimating, but if you go into the fight thinking, okay, I'm going to win this fight, and Charlie Edwards comes at his best, there could be a couple of tricky sort of rounds if you're not on it. Would you agree with that? No. <laughs> well, I had to ask. No. No? No, no. that's cut. There's no threat there, but... It's... The thing is, what, what people need to know as well is like, you wanna, like, I'm all champion, so I wanna be in the mix. When I see other big super flyweights in other yeah. big fights. You wanna be there, yeah. Like, that's what I'm, I'm gonna be. Yeah. But, you know, everyone has, everyone has their own plan. Um, I believe everything happens for a reason, so there'll be, t there'll be, there'll yeah. be a time where I'll be up in the Of box. course. I, and, um, I, it'll hopefully be soon. I think it's like a hustle. Like I said, I um, obviously you see it differently, but I, 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 I think he's just trying to get attention, get a fight, trying to hustle. I have to do it to get these interviews sometimes. <laughs> you just have to hustle, do you know what I'm saying? But um, speaking of big fights, so Roman Gonzalez, he came out and actually said that he's not ready, to, um, it was, I think it was a couple of months ago, he's not ready to fight you uh, at the moment. Sort of like he's, a champ, he's an ex-champion, he can choose who he wants to fight. Nobody called him out for ducking or anything like that because they've got people have a high amount of respect, obviously, for Chocolate Tito. What did you think when you heard him say that? Did, was that like a compliment to you or was that, oh, damn, I, I, you know, I want those big fights, I wanted that fight? No, it was more of a compliment, to be fair. Um, I think I'm pretty well known in Nicaragua. I've boxed five of them. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it, you know, he's... he's He's got, he's got powerful power. I think that fight will happen. I've got a feeling it will happen. I just feel it. I'm not sure when, but I think that. Yeah, it, I think it will happen. Yeah, I think but so, yeah. It's like, let's say if I box him now and I beat him, it's just like, he just lost his last two fights, so. You can't win. It, so, yeah. <laughs> but it's still Roman Gonzalez. Like, yeah, somebody yeah. asked me, but I said. I, but the thing is, that I, I want to see him come back. Look good. Right, so then it's a bit better for you when you... And, you know, get some good wins under him. I understand that. And yeah. then, if it does happen, which I hope it, I hope it does and it might do, um, then when I beat him, then people say, you know what, he looked good in the last couple of fights and Cal beat him, so fair play to him. Let's say the situation popped up and it was like your next fight. How do you think at this stage, with a Gonzalez offered two losses, how, how do you think that fight would play out? Oh, I'd, I'd probably be... Oh, I think I'd pole him. Do you reckon? Yeah. And I think I think that's obviously why they didn't take it as well because you know he's just come off two losses. I think I don't know. I think I'm, I'm a bit all wrong for him. Um, similar to wrong side, a bit too big. Um, you give a lot of looks as well to fights, don't you? You're in, out. You can box. You can move. And yeah, yeah. Like, like a wrong side. Obviously, wrong side's great, but he's a bit of a come forward type. He's a good fighter, really solid. But he's a come forward. Yeah, what you see is what you get. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I'm trying to say. Yeah, which will be in, out, off, off to the side, in, working on the inside body. And sometimes I think, would you agree? They look at that and think, okay, this is uh, this could be a little bit more more issues in it. So yeah, 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 of course. Thing, yeah. And it, I box fighters from Nick Bragu that that is uh, that were trained by he's trained who he's trained who he's trained by now. So obviously he's seen me close up and he knows what I'm capable of. But I still believe that I've still got a lot. I'm still learning all the time. I'm still improving as a fighter. Um, I've still got more to show. Can I request another um, body knockout in the next few fights, if that's all right? Yeah, I think I'm due one, and I'm... Yeah, man. Fucking hell, I had, that body I, shots, I, I had yeah. one for a while. All of a sudden... I, I remember you've done a body shot, um, I went mad in the video, it was just... Oh, it's, it's a thing of beauty, I can't remember if I've top of my head now. It wasn't too long ago, um, but... Um, yeah, probably, probably one in Birmingham. I it think so, yeah, Flores. yeah, yeah, I can't, I, can't, I can't remember the name of the guy. He's on the floor for about five minutes. <sighs> What's it feel when you dig that mother in? Is it like you know what? It, what that shot wasn't even a big, big. I never put a lot into that shot. It hit. It was more of him. I think he hit his arm and just dug his elbow into the side of his body. But it's still a but. but it's still the impact, isn't it? Yeah, I think the body shots. A lot of them. The ones that put him down are the ones that you don't really try to hit him bang on, and the, and the timing of it. But um, yeah, I think I'm due one. I've had some tough. Some tough cookies lately. These Japanese are, fires are very tough, especially the one that I fought in May last year. And what's your uh, what's your message to the Birmingham crew who've been supporting you from the start? People like me, not Birmingham, but I've been there from the start. Yeah. Kalia <laughs> Fai. <laughs> no man. What, what's, your, what's your overall message to to, to those people? No, I appreciate support, man. Like it's it's, it's humbling. You know what I mean? Um, you know, just to see people like when you when you go into town or when you're out walking the streets of Birmingham and 
people spot you and they, come, they, make, they make the effort to come over to you. Um, people spot me and they call the police, that's not quite, really quite the same for me, but you're gone. Yeah, but see me out at night. To be fair, I tried getting into my house once and the, my neighbours called the police. <laughs> 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 Trust me, no one will lie. It's so embarrassing. Oh, God. It's so embarrassing. Was you dressed like a vagabond? I, I, you know what it was? A ragamuffin. <laughs> Do you know what I did? I left, um, I went out with my missus for, for a bite to eat. It was on a Sunday and I took my key off my keys, my house key, because I went running early in the morning. Right, yeah. So I thought, I don't want to take this bunch of keys, I'm just going to take one key. And then I never put that key back on. Right, so when yeah. we went out, I just took my car keys and was out of the house. And then when I got back in, the, it was dark, and I thought, when I pulled up to my house, I thought, shit. I bet you, you pulled know? up to the house slowly as well, did you, to make it no, 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 I just, I just parked, I just just parked on my drive, and then my missus was waiting at the door. I got out of my car, and I was thinking, shit, I've left the house, clean the house. Whoops. I don't know how I'm getting in the house, and you not getting him out for shit and um, I was trying to get through the back door conservatory door and the side door and then I see flashlights within five minutes two police vans have popped up my drive woman told me to stay still well at least there's people looking out for you look at it like that but at least one cop had come later and he, he recognised me oh there you are right, so he let me off then what does Mrs Califi think of this? boxing mm. you boxing oh, I hate it Especially. how long have you been together? ten years oh wow okay she don't like it, man. Don't, don't like it, hate it. Don't watch it, don't watch it. Oh, really? It's interesting. Watches it afterwards. Afterwards, yeah. But obviously... My mum hates it as well. Oh, does she? Oh, bless her. She comes to the, she comes to the other one. But she comes to my world's heart fight. And um, one of my mates was sitting next to my mum. And he said to me, your mum just had her, face, her hands in her face the whole time. Oh, bless her. Bless her? I was like, mum, that's a fucking VIPs, man. It's a VIP, <laughs> see? Do you know how much these VIP? Do you know how much these, like you get a VIP? You could you could have given it to one of your mates or someone someone that really wanted it. Yeah, like a wee box in or something. That's what I mean. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> how, like, Joshua ticket to ring size one. That's right? it. Yeah. Fifteen hundred quid and that. Yeah. And my mum, I said, mum, you just sat there with your, fa your hands in your face the whole time. I could at least watch it. But at least they uh, obviously the misses and whatnot appreciates the spoils of war and the fruits of your labour, which is a yeah, yeah, yeah. good thing. You know, the, the thing is, I'm lucky to have um, all my family and that, my missus. Any little bit, you guys? Nah, not yet. Oh yeah. Getting the boxing done out of the way and then... Uh... Yeah, I'm always on the go. You know, okay. I'm always um, never home. If I'm, I live on a motorway. So, I've got you, yeah. Um, when I have kids, I want to I see them. I want to be able to see them grow. Not be away all the time and not, not see them. And then they could look back and say, look, my dad was a champ. Yeah, but there's good and bad things about that. You know, they, they don't get to see it live, but they'll be able to look back. And look say, back and see it, yeah. Yeah, when I'm, when I'm about, you know, when I'm in my late 30s, whatever, and I'm retired and I'm fat and bald. You having a dig, mate? No, nah, nah, <laughs> that's going to be me. I'm halfway there now, anyway, but when I'm fat and bald, you know, mini Nas. You like Nas when I'm going to retire. Shout out to Nas. <laughs> That's an image, man. Okay. Yeah, my dad was actually fit at one stage. Yeah. He was in good shape. That's an image. And with that, Cal, you five, thank you for giving me your time. Thank you Thanks for talking you. to IFL TV. And uh, hopefully catch up with you soon before uh, those big fights. No doubt. Thank you, brother. All four belts in the cruiserweight division will belong proudly around the waist of one man.